Hello everyone, I hope everyone's having a great day today and I uh, hope you had a great weekend as well. And I tell you, it's a beautiful, beautiful Monday morning, and I'm so honored and thrilled to and blessed to have all you guys on board today. As you get on the Facebook Live today, definitely let me know. Let me know in the news feed. Say hey to me. Tell me where you're from. If I don't know where you're from, I'd love to be able to talk to uh, you and find out exactly what part of the, the world you're from. We have a lot of people from New Zealand, to Australia, to Canada. We've got a lot of Canadians out there. Uh, gosh, we've got all over Europe. We've got Switzerland. We've got Germany. We've got... Um, Man, Sweden, we got uh, Norway, we got so Netherlands, we got so many people who join with us and and write in for prophetic words. And so I'm always honored and blessed to have each person, all you guys from so many different parts of the world, on here with me as well. And uh, you know, people ask me a lot. They say, uh, you know, where do uh, um, like most people who write in for prophetic words come from? And I said, you'd be amazed. Um, like as far as the United States, we have Canada. Uh, well, excuse me, the United States, we have Texas, we have um, Florida, and California, and New York are the top four big ones in the country. And then outside the country, just thought I'd give you guys some knowledge here. Outside of the country, we have a huge population in Sweden, Norway, Netherlands, who write in for words all the time, like almost every day. We have uh, Germany, Switzerland, huge, because huge, I've done conferences over there before many times. And we have, um, believe it or not, Israel. Let's see, we have, uh, how many other countries we have? Oh, we got a lot of people. We got China, we got Taiwan, we got a lot of people from Taiwan who write in. So yeah, uh, I, we just it's amazing the people all around the globe who write in for prophetic words. And I love prophesying, as you guys know. And so I always say, bring it on. The more, the merrier. I love it. It just sort of sharpens your my prophetic gifting more the more I prophesy throughout the day to people. And as you guys know, all the donations go to, you know, to our to our missions. I mean, what better plan is that? You know, to be able to have missions taken care of, you know, while you're being blessed by hearing the word of the Lord. So it's a it's a what is it, kill two birds two birds to one stone, right? So um how many of you like my, my, my shirt today? First class, let me see here. Anyway, isn't that cool? Hey, we're all first class in the kingdom, right? So today, I want to talk to you guys about just something really small before I tell you a little bit about a, a package I put together for you guys today that actually I told my staff, and one of the guys on staff was like, that's freaking awesome. That's amazing. That's a killer deal. And I'm like, yeah. So, uh, But I want to talk to you guys today for a minute about basically going to the other side. You know, when you look at the kingdom of God and you hear the, uh, and Ireland, yes, Mary, thank you, Ireland. And many of you guys know, by the way, just let me, let me say this real quick. This is on Facebook Live, which is on Twitter, Instagram, Zap it. We have a lot of different uh, social media outlets where this video is going to be uh, going uh, downloading into. In case you guys are not just on Facebook, you're hearing, hearing it from a different outlet, social media, hey, you know what? We welcome you guys as well. So I want to talk tonight, today about um, basically going to the other side. You know, when we read about the disciples and Jesus and basically about, you know, getting in the boat, let's go to the other side. And we hear these stories of the scriptures where the disciples get in the boat, you know, hey, Jesus goes up and prays, the storm comes, you know, and how Jesus comes in the water walking towards them and just says, peace be still. You know, I want us to take a look at this story because I think there's like a couple of stories where they're getting in the boat going to the side, right? And I want us to look at these stories for a moment. I want us to examine the fact that and, you know, uh, we read scriptures when it deals with the valley of, of decision. You know, we read scriptures when it deals with, um, you know, uh, the valley in the in the book of Revelation, you know, which is the, sort of the valley, which I call the mind, where there's a lot of warfare, a lot of fighting. You know, if you notice in the Bible, many places, for example, where it deals with um, the valleys, it deals with where battles took place. That, battles took place not in the mountains, it took place, in, you know, in the valleys. Because the, because the Bible also alludes towards types and shadows where, let's say, the valley is the mind. You know, which means basically this is where the war goes. This is right here is where the warfare starts. I got my camera turned backwards, so I got to watch where I'm, where I'm, you know, looking and, and moving my head. And so, uh, and so the battle usually is is the mind, right? And so when we read of these things like the the battle of Armageddon, the battle of these things, you realize that you you know you read where it's taking places in, in valleys, which is basically the the uh, the subconscious, the mind, because this is where the the, the warfare starts, right? I'm talking typology to you guys. And so when you think about that, you think about even once again, Jesus even saying, hey, here's the water. Guys, get in the boat, go to the other side. And then one story we hear where the storm comes. You know, the disciples are in the boat. They're afraid. You know, what's going to happen? Jesus comes walking in the water. They, they uh, you're know, afraid of him thinking he was a ghost. And he speaks to the storm, right? And you read about these things. You know, the other side is where the demoniac was. You know, the casting out of the devils. You know, the signs, wonders, and miracles. You read about these stories in the Bible where it always was, you know, um, Going, going through something, crossing over, you know, yea, though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, there's always this, this, 
mentality of maybe going through or getting to the other side, right? And sometimes when you're going through it, or maybe crossing over, or, you know, like the children of Israel, for example, you know, with Moses, you know, here you have a one side, you know, of, of the, of the river, you know, where you get, um, the Pharisees chasing the, you know, Israelites. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like God says, Hey, you know, Moses, extend your rod out, hold your, you know, your staff out, hold your, hold your, hold your rod out. I'm going to part the waters. You guys walk across it. And when the Egyptians try to follow you guys as dumb as they are, you know, as if God is going to hold the waters up for them too, you know, and then they're going to come crashing and they're going to drown, right? And so you think about and read about going through valleys, crossing over the Jordan, getting to the other side. And then on the other side was things that happen. You know, Elijah, for example, where Elijah talks about, you know, uh, God looks at him, he says, hey, get up and go to Zarephath. You know, there you will find, you know, th this woman, you, you know, you'll, and all of a sudden you, you hear, read about where miracles take place there, right? And even the dead's raised, you know, according to Elijah. So you always hear stories that actually tell you, go through this, cross over this, you know, um, it's almost like modern terminology, like the like the old song we all we all probably love. You know, like a bridge over troubled waters. I think it was what Simon Gar and Garfunkel. You know, great song back in the was it I think seventies. I think it's late seventies. I think I think it's right. And um, you know, and it's it's and yet today we think about being a bridge builder. You know, crossing the bridge. You know, getting to the other side. Why are all these so significant to us? Because we don't stop to realize that God requires us to go through things. Sometimes to get to the joy, you got to go through pain. Sometimes to get to the other side, you got to go through a storm. Sometimes to get to the other side, you have to go through a valley. You know, uh, you know, yea, they walk to the valley of the shadow of death. So, you know, sometimes you have to go through the valley of death, the valley of even shadows, where it, where it's as it's if you know, it's not even the real thing, but it's just things that are there that that are sent to sort of scare you, scare scare the daylights out of you. You know, and all this stuff is here, not so God can say, "Let me just see how much you can take." You know, no, it's to where we can look and realize how much are we willing to pay a price? How much are we willing to say, I'm willing to go through the storm. I have no issue going to the valley. I have no issue with, you know, uh, battling in the mind, as Joyce Meyer always talks about the battlefield of the mind, you know? I have no issue with going through the valley where I where I perceive maybe in my mind is playing games with me, wondering, is this the real deal? Are these shadows or are these the real thing attacking me or what I'm going through? You know, and notice how all these things require things. Like God telling Moses, hold up the staff, hold up the rod, you know, uh, you know, yea, though walk the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and the staff is with me, you know, to comfort me, you know, um, go on the other side with the disciples, you know, petrified, man. I mean, like, you know, whoa, dude, there's a, there's a ghost in the water. Could you imagine probably every cuss word was coming out of their mouth, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, what's going on? You know what I mean? And, and so they're faced with a ghost, which was Jesus and, and a storm. I'd be like, man, just shoot me now. You know, it's like, Really? You know, I mean, what more can happen, you know? But think about all of these things that these people, and, and, and us included, have to deal with, have to go through to get to the other side, to get to the joy we're looking for. You know, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Sometimes it's okay to cry. Sometimes it's good to cry. Sometimes it's not a bad thing to say, I'm scared for you. I'm scared for me. I don't want you to go through this. I feel like I'm the one that's at fault. I feel like I'm the one that started this problem with you or, or you know, or look what I've done or I messed up here. And, and you know, it's okay because think of it this way. When the Bible says joy comes in the morning, we have to remember the verse before that is of great necessity. And that is weeping may endure for a night. Comma, but joy comes in the morning, which means that it's okay. You can't take the joy without the weeping. You can't take the joy without the pain. You can't take the mountaintop without the valley. You can't take, you know, getting heaven, you know, getting into heaven without fighting hell itself, you know, or it's just, it's just life. You know, when people ask me about theology, I say, look, Theology really doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is realizing that when you look through Genesis Revelation, you recognize that to get to somewhere, you got to go through something. To get what you want, you're going to have to pay a price for it. It's just the way of the kingdom. And so, you know, when we when you find yourself at a place where it's like, why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this? First of all, let me tell you, let me tell you what not to do before I tell you what to do. 
you know, when we deal with what not to go through, don't look at life and say, oh, I got to be a martyr. I got to go through this for the kingdom. I want somebody to say, blah, blah, blah. You know, get off your victim mentality. Come on, grow up. Don't get off your victim mentality. You know, God's not going to love you any, any more because you're a martyr. You know what I mean? Some people have this martyring syndrome as if, if I, if I, you know, and, it, and borderline, also let me tell you this. A, bore, a, a martyr, martyring syndrome and a victim mentality actually borderlines the power of pride. Did you know that? Because when you say, oh, the devil's attacking me. Oh, I'm having to go through this. God must really love me. You know, I, you think about how ridiculous those statements sound. Because what you're dealing with is you're dealing with pride. As if I'm having to go through this because I'm so loved. I've got to deal with this and I'm under attack. Because, you know, and, and you're once about to say it all gets back to you. Those are prideful things. People don't realize most things of life come from the realm of pride. And I want you to think about that. And so, but my point being with all that is the fact that it doesn't mean that God loves you more. You must have a bigger testimony. I, you know, when I hear people tell me that in life coaching, and they're like, God must have something great for me of all the stuff I'm going through. And I'm like, okay, come out of Pentecostalism, come over into freedom of the kingdom, you know. God doesn't need to pull a flower, pluck a flower because he needs one in the kingdom, you know. Come on. And so my point being is, you know, you got to not look at life that way. You got to remember, hey, you know, it's this, this is life. Sometimes God looks at us and says, hey, hey, toughen up, man. Come on, man up, you know. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make you a better person. I'm trying to show you just what you can deal with and how much you can pull upon the Lord and how much you can throw at your life to recreate it and how much you can structure it. So life life deals with storms and trials and tribulations and and negativity and weeping and crying and blaming others and blaming myself, you know, and what have I done? I've made a mistake. Gosh, I've made enough mistakes in my life. I mean, just, you know, I, I still do, you know, I'm not perfect, you know, and, but through all of that, I don't act like it must be God shining his light upon me of I'm loving you so much I'm putting you through this. It's a fact of the kingdom. Kingdom is just just basically letting you know that, you know, trials and tribulations will come, but be of good cheer. You know, I've already overcome. And so my point being to all this is there's times when, when God will actually, I believe, call down the storm. You know, when people ask me, oh, the devil brought the storm, you know, um, <laughs> when, uh, you know, when you get into this, uh, this place of, uh, sorry, I got a text. When you get into this place of really looking at your life and thinking to yourself, you know, um, you know, I'm on the, I'm in the boat and, oh, the devil made the storm come. The devil made the storm come, you know, and, and then you look and you say, you know, oh, where's, where's the Lord? The Lord must love me. You know, Jesus probably went on the mountaintop here, probably thinking, okay, God, let's get them good. Let, let, let's call down that storm. I, you know, what if Jesus called down the storm just to say, hey, dudes, come on. Let's see let, let, let's see how tough you are. Come on. Let, let's put into action what I've taught you. You know, let's see what you're made of. I mean, I, 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 need, I need some strong people in the kingdom. And here's one thing Jesus did not say, just for a lot of you who always thrive on army, 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 warriors, 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 which is not really even mentioned in the New Testament a whole lot. You know, uh, reality check. Hello, read the New Testament. You don't hear a lot about warriors and and battling up and you know and uh, no, you really don't. Army, I not even mentioned. I mean, you know, you 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 know. So a lot of people need to really check their theology. That's all Old Testament because sonship always trumps over army. And when you're like, I'm a warrior for the kingdom, then you you you're belittling yourself. Hello, you're belittling yourself. When you when you're been you've been shifted to be a son of God, sons and daughters of God trump being a warrior. So when you say I'm a warrior for God's kingdom, you're actually belittling yourself. You're putting yourself down. Come on, folks, you're putting yourself down. You're a son and a daughter, one with God, and you know, and so you know you got to be careful what you th what you say. Just because some preacher said it doesn't make it right. Come on. I mean, the greatest honor to be is sons and daughters, not warriors in the kingdom of God. I'm a, you know, when, when people draw these images of like the bride of Christ in this white veil, but yet she's got her army books, boots on, I'm like, okay, that's a little weird to me, a little bit weird to me, you know? It's like, that just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, you know, cuckoo, you know, but I don't mean that bad, it's just it doesn't make sense because I'm not, I'm not that. I am a son of God, period. And that's the highest version, that's the strongest honor we could have is to be called sons 
of God, one with God, bone of his bone, flesh was flesh, the Bible says. So that's another rabbit trail there. So my point being to all this is life is beautiful. Life includes pain and joy, weeping and sorrow, uh, happiness and sadness, uh, fighting and enjoying the battle, you know, going to the beach and going to the mountains, you know, uh, sitting home bored sometimes and reading a good book. I mean, life, all this makes up a beautiful life that we live in. And so when you feel like you're going to the valley or, you know, you're having to really just really fight through some stuff right now, you know, don't take the Pentecostalism mentality that is just nothing but blah, blah, blah. That's not really, I don't want to say it's, it's not really biblical. Move in a place of saying, hey, dude, come on. You know, when I go through hard times, in fact, people ask me, man, I bet you do spiritual warfare all the time. I'm like, dude, I never engage in spiritual warfare. Like, that's like the last thing. You have to remind me to actually sometimes do that, you know, if I'm ever supposed to do that. The, I mean, the battle's the Lord. So what am I doing, you know? And so for me, I live my life and say, hey, if I'm going through a hard time, it's life, man. I don't have to bind the devil. It's it's just, it's life. Because, it's, because everything in this universe that God's brought in the kingdom of God within me, it's just working out for my good. I mean, it's all working out for my good. I mean, so you got to take the good with the bad because believe it or not, folks, once again, I say this all the time, but, um, and that is that God doesn't take good and turn it around to good. God takes bad and turns it into good. So because of that, you have to think to yourself, you know, hey, I mean, I, this is my life and all, it's all going to be turned around for me. So enjoy the journey, Jeremy. Live this life that you've been given and enjoy the valley. Enjoy the mountaintop. Pull that rod out. Make a miracle happen. Create your day. Speak healing over here. When you're down and out sometimes, hey, just speak to yourself some joy and laughter. I don't have to go, I bind you devil and you demon of... I, I think people create their own devils, to be honest with you. That's not even biblical. You know, I, I bind you devil of sadness or devil of blah, blah, blah. You know, and you're once about to say... Don't waste your energy, people. Just realize, man, weeping may endure for night. Joy comes in the morning. Move in the highest part of God's kingdom. You know what that is? Guess what trumps warfare? Check this out. Guess what trumps you binding and loosing all these things? Okay, now, this is important, so don't take, I'm not, but literally that, I'm just saying, though, what is more important than you binding devils over here? You know what's the greatest weapon against that? Can anybody guess at that? Peace. Think about it. So would you rather be a person of peace and maintain and sustain the power of that armor, if you want to call it that, of peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, moving in God's wholeness. Or do you want to find yourself, I bind you, I bind you, you know, and, and, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, first of all, your blood pressure is getting high. Chill, you know, like Taylor Swift once said, you need to calm down. You know, uh, your blood pressure is bitten raised here, you know, uh, not good for your blood, not good for the, and those toxins, you might be buying those devils, but those toxins in your body are being released also, also, uh, come on, I'm being honest with you guys. Or do you rather just say, hey, you know what, man, you know, uh, what, what's the old saying? Uh, ah, okay, you got Akuna Matata, you know, I have no worries, you know, I know I know, one of my friends were like that with the King of Lion King, Akuna Matata, you know, in other words, I don't have any worries, man, I mean, you know, because the battle's the Lord's, I'm going to keep my peace, I'm going to move my peace, I, I, you know, I, in fact, you know what, if I want to, if I want to sustain the kingdom of God in my life, you know, here's the thing, if I want to sustain the kingdom of God in my life, here's not, here's what I don't need to do, I command you devil, what devil, what's your name devil, oh, I command this over here, oh, there's a devil, oh, there's a, there's a high, there's a spiritual you know, devil over my atmosphere. That has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. How many of you know that? Did you know you'll never find the word kingdom and all that stuff in the same sentence? Never, never. Which will, the only thing close to that is the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And you know what that means? It's a violency on your position. I'm violent with standing in my position. And violent doesn't mean fight. Violent means a firm and a and, and a surety and strength in your knowledge of knowing what I am and who I am. So I just maintain my peace. My violence is, huh, I'm peaceful. I'm at peace today, man. No worries. Akuna Matata. I'm at peace today. I'm sustaining my peace today. I'm sustaining my wholeness. Are you with me? Because binding, binding, what's your name? Devil, come down, principality over the city of blah, 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 blah. You know, I mean, none of that is related to the kingdom of God. What did, what did the Bible say in the New Testament? The kingdom of God, the Bible says, the, the, what's the definition of the kingdom of God? Is it is it warfare? Nope, nothing mentioned about that. Is it commanding devils to come down over your city, your house, your home? Not, not that either. Let's see here. What is the kingdom of God? Oh, wait a minute. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, which means just right standing. 
stand right in your in your call. Peace. Nothing missed, nothing broken. Hey, I'm whole. I'm not going to forget that. And joy. I'm going to start laughing my head off, having some laughter on TV, watching some comedy, and know that joy of the Holy Spirit is going to hit me all the time because I'm sustaining that. That's the kingdom of God, my friends. And so be careful. Be careful for all the all the hoopla, hoopla and, and the hype and the drama queens of... I, I, people laugh when I say that. The drama queens of church. All the preachers have hyped it. Oh, you got to bind this, brother. You know, and I want somebody to say, you know what, drama queen? Sit down, baby. You need to calm down. Come on, Taylor Swift. You, you, got, a, you got a good message in your mouth, girl. You need to calm down, preacher, because you need to you need to listen to the scriptures. And that is just just chill, bro. Just chill. Just chill, bro. You know? I mean, that's I love that. Because just get your peace, man. Teach your people peace. And and just to maintain the violency of just, ha, huh, huh, I'm fine today. I'm 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 so joy, man. I'm such at peace today. And nothing's gonna take that from me. And I'm so happy about that. You know, you want to know the enemy of your of your consciousness is gonna come hitting the ground when the Bible says this. It says what? Every high thing that exalts itself. In other words, uh, casting down vain imagination. When did, let me ask you a question, and my friend Kimberly's on here, okay? When did casting down become part of warfare? Think about that, folks. When did casting down equate or become equivalent with warfare? Because I know for me, when I, when I you know, like the Bible says, um, the, uh, what is it? Uh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Well, laid up is similar to the fact of the same thing as casting down. Did you know that? Which basically is saying action format. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the wealth of wicked is laid up. Oh, it's laid up there. Let me let me reach up and grab this. Oh, there it is. There's my wealth. I just, you know, I don't have to bind and say, I command my wealth to come to me in Jesus' name. No, it just, I just, it's laid up for me. I reach up. What's laid up for me? I receive it. Pull it down. It's mine. It comes out. It's all around me. It's the energy of wealth because I, I, I encompass myself with just reaching up and grabbing it. Casting down does not mean warfare. Casting down, if you read it, just basically says, hey, you know what? I don't need this anymore, you know? Uh, so I, I don't need to think that anymore. You take the thought and you just sort of just, just you know, throw it aside. You know why? Because what you don't focus on, I mean, what you focus on expands. What you don't focus on dries up. Casting down vain imagination and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Anything that is not of the mind of unlimitational power of, of Christ. Hey, you know what? Just put it down. Just put it down. You know, that's all you got to do. And so, I, I, you know, and this is the thing that people don't really realize is we've made Christianity drama, theatrics, you know, and, and what happens is when the world looks at us, they see everything that we've got to go through to get something that we claim that we're trying to get our hands on when the whole time we've, had, we've always had it, and so have they, but it's just awakening to the reality of what they've already had, awakening to the reality of what we know the Bible tells us is ours anyway, so... You know, hey, no worries, folks. You know, I don't have to fight for it. I just got to open my mind up to receive it. I just got to awaken to the reality of what is already mine and what I've always known to be real, which is my identity is here. The kingdom, the treasure, right here. This right here, I just live in the power of, of, of peace and joy, and I attract what I, what I need in my mind because whatever, because... Think upon things that are pure, holy, good report. Let me ask you a question. When did calling down these things of, and I'm going to get to my book section uh, thing in a minute. When did uh, making demons tell tell us their name and what demons over your city? When First of all, I'd say this. Where is it biblical? Second of all, uh, and especially the New Testament, okay? Second of all, my question would be, when did we make that top priority over Peace that surpasses our natural understanding. Being a son of God, chilling out in the kingdom of God, knowing that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is all right there. And that's and those things I don't have to worry about. Those when I hear people say the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, you know what God I hear God say, Hey Jeremy, chill, bro. Just chill, my son. Just chill, bro, you know? Just chill. Chill out. Because that you just stand right. You stand right before me, moving that peace, brother, moving that peace, son. And when you do, you know what? Get some joy to you. Nobody wants to see a sour-faced Christian. Get some joy to you. Have some fun. Live life abundantly that I gave you. So many great things this world I want you to see. Travel the world. Have fun with it, Jeremy. And when you do, live my example. Be the image and likeness of the King of kings and Lord of lords. And when you do, you know what? People are going to see that and see the good works of their Father in heaven. 
That's all I got to do, you know? So there's your sermon for the day, folks, all right? And, uh, and so here's the key thing I want you to begin to really, really grasp today, because I did this for you guys, all right? And uh, I think if uh, my friends on here, if you can put the link on there one more time. Oh, boy, one more time. Hit me, baby, one more time. Oh, oh, Brittany, come out of my mind here. So uh, I got a great, great section, a great uh, section for you guys. Be still and know. Yes, exactly. Be still and know. That's it right there. I put together a collection. It's called Special Jeremy Lopez Collection Books, okay? Here's what I did. I actually gathered seven of my of really good selling books. None of them were in the Power to Create package. These are all separate. And there's seven of my books here. And instead of $70, okay, I'm letting them go for $49.99. Seven books. Instead of $70, i am going to put it for $49.97, all right? And they include this. What Everything I just told you about, by the way, as far as going to the other side, is in this book. One of the best books. I love this book. From Old Paradigms to Creative Train, Change, Transformation. I love this book. I mean, there's a, in fact, some of the chapters in here, I'll tell you this real quick. Some of the chapters in this one deals with going from glory to glory, the tablet on your own heart, the power of the mind, what would Jesus really do from lake to the shore. Uh, the moment of decision, the love of God where you are, a step ahead, formalist, don't fly. Amen to that, folks. Keep on being stretched. A change, change, change. Jesus in a new dimension. Uh, God in, in the change. Put in Christ first over and over again. So in the seven book collection, I'm letting go for $49.99 today as opposed to $70. you are going to get this one, Transformation, dynamic book. You're going to get The Power of the Eternal Now, really thick book, one of my first books, very deep, by the way. You will also get... The power of mindsets, which, by the way, you cannot buy this separate. People don't realize, you can't buy this separate anywhere. Uh, it's actually locked into one of my courses, and so I'm giving you an opportunity right now, one time only in this package, to buy two of the books that are locked in courses through only through this package. The Power of Mindsets, amazing book, by the way. Another one that's locked into a course that you can't buy separately is Awakening to Prosperity, Setting Yourself Up to Live. This, this book... Can't buy it separately, only in the course. But for right now only, in this package special, the link's on there right now, I'm going to give it to you guys only in the package special as well. Another book that's in the seven-book series of the collection I'm giving you guys, The Supply Dwells Within. This is this book right here jump-started me to realize everything is inside of me. One of the best books I've ever written. I love it on the subject of knowing that everything is inside of me. The Supply Dwells Within. And then the, the seventh book that I love, that I actually spoke a little bit about today, is Wholeness. The mystery of healing and wholeness. I deal with not, I don't give you just Bible scriptures on by his stripes you were healed. I deal with the things of um, that people don't see, such as uh, the body and the blood of Jesus, where he says, that's why many of you are sick and dying, because you cannot discern properly the body of Christ, which is not this, it's these, it's this. When you can't discern and honor and respect the body of Christ, because every joint supplies, when you disrespect a joint, of someone else in the body of Christ, all right? You write them off, you disrespect them, you're asking sicknesses and death to come upon you. Come on. The Old Testament even talks about the Ark of the Covenant. Once it was taken out of, of Israel and placed in the enemy's hands, man, people were dying left and right. They're, they even said, get this thing out of here. Take it back to where it belongs because we, what we stole is killing us. And so it's very important to align yourself, know where you are, know your atmosphere, create your, the energy of your atmosphere. And so these seven books right here are going to help you guys out. And if you, if you click on the link right there, um, you're going to get all these for just $49.99. $49.97, excuse me. There, there are a lot of thick books here. $49.97 ends up instead of $70. Now, we also have it to where you can get all seven of these as ebooks, or you can get these seven um, that I put in the link below that my staff did. Let me get over here. There's seven of them here. They're hiding over here. Hold on a minute. There's more. There's more. Come on, folks. Come out. Come out. There we go. I'm trying to get the rest of them out here, man. There's seven of these guys here. Seven books, okay? So all seven books are forty nine ninety seven as opposed to seventy. This will not be forever, okay? I've got once again two books in here that are locked in the courses. I'm gonna I'm a one time only. You can get them with this package special collection, okay? And you're gonna save yourself thirty dollars. So seven books right now, okay? On that link, because if not, you won't be able to find them. And I'll tell you what I'll do. Gosh, you guys can be. I, 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 it might be too overwhelming. It all depends on how many packages we sell, but. As, if you guys buy the package today, 
I will autograph all seven of them for you, okay? I'm just going to tell you that right now. So uh, click on the link right there. It's called Special Jeremy Lopez Collection. If you can't find the link or if, let's say, for example, if you say to yourself, you know, oh, man, I don't, I don't remember the video Jeremy had. On IdentityNetwork.net, just for a couple of days only, uh, in the search engine, put in Jeremy Lopez Collection. Jeremy Lopez Collection, three words, Jeremy Lopez Collection, and you'll pull it up and before, the, before it, it expires. You're saving $30 on seven books of mine, okay? So get them today, all right, when you can. You guys have a blessed day. Oh, and by the way, my friend did not remind me to share it. It's okay. I beat him to it. Uh, so that is this. Share this video. If you know this will benefit and bless other people, maybe who is in spiritual warfare or constantly fighting or focusing on something they shouldn't be focusing on, share this video. Every one of you, you are a blessing to me. Share this video right now with your Facebook uh, group. It would mean the world to me if you can, all right? Like the page. Give your comments on the news feed. It helps us out. And for those of you who have not ever rated um, Identity Network, we would be honored and thrilled if you would go on Facebook on, your, on the Identity Network's page and give us a five-star rating. It would mean the world to me. It really helps us and boost us up a little bit. Give us a five-star rating. Put on there what you love about me, the website. Hopefully you love me. If you don't, then don't comment. Um, if, if you don't love me, my name is Jane Doe, all right? If you do love me, my name is Jeremy Lopez. But it would mean the world to me if you guys could do that, all right? We're family. We support one another, all right? I love you guys. Have an awesome, blessed day. Don't forget the podcast on Wednesdays, collection of the Jeremy Lopez collection. Rate us, share it, and have an awesome, blessed day. Love you guys.